Hello, this is Calvin Idol. Welcome to The Lavender Table, a web-based talk show for and about the LGBT community. And now, let's keep the conversation going with your host, Gary Elgin. I suppose for her role as the sassy, wisecracking nurse on the Golden Girls spin-off Empty Nest. Also an advocate, activist, and has run for state office. <laughs> we welcome Park Overall to the Lavender Table. That is lovely. Thank you very much. You have called yourself a hard East Tennessee woman. Yeah. You don't seem that hard. Oh, I don't? No. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I guess what happened was I grew up in a very Republican, whew, whew, Bible Belt conservative town. And my parents were atheists and intellectuals and liberal Democrats. So I've had a lot to fight my whole life. Because I'm going to stick with them on yeah. that stuff. Right, right. And I have. Well, talk to us about your parents. They were colorful. I had to go off. One of my friends said, Park, you had to leave town to go get more famous than your parents. Daddy was a, a federal magistrate, and he was drunk. So he let everybody go. He couldn't stand to put a man in prison. He let everybody go. FBI still looks at me cross-eyed. And, you know, because we have them up there. Right. And mother was a um, Vanderbilt, went because of the um, fugitive poets. That's why she went to Vanderbilt. Oh, wow. And uh, is an offic was an offic they're past, but she was an aficionado in antiques and the English language. They say there wasn't a thing in English she didn't know before 1700, let alone after. That's the truth. So she was a piece of work. And so I was the only child. So I had a lot to compete. <laughs> <laughs> the technique of timing, as they say, cannot be taught, uh, but it can, it's innate. And you've had it. You have it. I have it. Yeah. And I also, uh, when I view a script, I don't view it like anyone else at all. I mean, I, I've taken things that are... For instance, you take the lead in a big movie, Beautiful Woman, and hand me that script, and, and her lines are like, oh yes, oh no, or whatever. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? What can I do with this? Grace Zabriskie called me one day to pe play Roseanne's sister. They had sent her the script, and she said, what do I do with this? And that's how I feel about most straight roles. I love the character roles. Love, 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 love. Well, and, and if they give you something to work with... Then you, you know, can roll. Yes, just give me the outline over my go. Over, my, over the years, the scripts just... I just got sent a great one on Friday, and we had to put it on tape in Johnson City, knock on wood. It was the best script I've seen in five years. If you're a woman over 50... You're not going to work. Right. Um, if you're a big movie star, you might. But I saw Melanie Griffith went off the other day in the paper. I don't know if you saw that. I didn't. She, was, she went off about it. She should. She, she said should. she's 50. I, d I doubt that. We all lie. Most people take shave two years <laughs> off of it, you know. But anyway, she's furious. Um, that, and then you watch a European film. Everybody's over 60. There's at least 10 people over 60 in every European film. You don't have to be young. Right. So this, this preoccupation America has is frightening. It is. And it's because, I don't, you probably know this, but before you get to be our age, they want you to buy Tide Soap or Cadillac or whatever. 
And I'm like, well, my audience is older. Don't they get to want? No. They've already wanted what they wanted and bought it. They want you before your habits are set. Isn't that fascinating? It's almost vicious. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's no way to live. No. It's no way to live. No. But that's the business model for why they do that. And I think it's fascinating. Well, it is fascinating. I, the psychology of sales and the psychology of retail, I spent most of my uh, years in retail. And the psychology behind it and what you have, uh, what they paint the store and, and where they put things on the left and where they put things on the right and, and why. And, and it's, it's amazing. Well, you brought me to this glorious room and I sure wanted a drink. Well, we are at <laughs> Coco Moon in the middle Ooh, of Market Square beautiful. in Knoxville, Tennessee. Beautiful place. It is beautiful. And, I'm and from I a, thank them. I'm from up here at Appalachia. You know, we don't have things like this. You've been um, a very outspoken advocate for women's rights, gay rights, mm -hmm. environmental concerns. Mm -hmm. Why are you making so much noise? <laughs> Everybody asks that. The name Park comes from the last name Mac Park. And the Mac Parks were the yeoman keeper, keepers of the park. So it's in my, it's bonular, and I got it on us. I see so much abuse, children, animals, environment. There's no going back on the environment. These rednecks can say all day. Look, I've slept with them, but I don't listen to them. We've got some factories moving into my poor decimated county. We did the water test on the Nolichucky River and found highly enriched uranium traceable to nuclear fuel services. Linda Modica Sierra did that, okay? And we took them to court. We lost. I think it was bad lawyering. Um, that's partially my fault. Uh, it was the Yankee lawyers, not our homeboy. Let me say that. Now, I mean that. Okay, and now I'm on another one, and we continue with the nuclear. And what we found, and what I can prove to anybody that cares to know, is that the, the TDEC, Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, is not regulating, and EPA has left it up to TDEC. So you got no regulation here at all. Yeah, you've got the fox. Garden the hen house. Right. That's right. right. That's absolutely right. You were born in Nashville. Apparently. Yeah. We moved here. <laughs> by, see, I, I'm a small time tobacco heiress. Yes. And my grandfather had them, and my daddy came down here to take over. And uh, apparently he and them old boys up there cornered the tobacco market and the feds took it away from them. I think it's what they call racketeering. You've mentioned a number of times uh, about a, an ashtray that uh, was always present in your home. Yes. Can you tell us about that and what the significance of it is? Well, they asked me to, the, the union, the Democrats asked me to speak at uh, Jackson Day yes. in Nashville, which is a big deal, and I was like, okay, I was very honored. And I brought up the fact that when I grew up, people in Tennessee don't understand what a union is for. They don't, yeah, there's bad unions. Oh, well, there's also the five-day work week now, folks. You know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it to you. And we had an AFL-CIO ashtray on the kitchen table my whole life growing up. That's how I grew up. And what did that mean to you growing up, though? I mean, did, was it explained to you? Uh, how did the recognition of its importance come to you? Well, when I was little, very little, I was watching the TV. Daddy was a news hound, so it was always on. And we were the last people in Greene County to get a black and white because he was from the Depression. <laughs> So when, when that blew, he had a fit. We had to get a color one. Anyway, he, I was watching the TV, and there was a man on there. And I said, oh, wow, I like him, don't you? And they both turned and snapped at me, just no. And it was Barry Goa. 
And when you get that much blowback, you start paying attention. Because they blew back at Barry. Sure did. And I know so many young people now, well, young my age, that say, I was a Goldwater Republican. Well, honey, I was six or seven or eight, and I knew better. <laughs> but do you believe that the unions do have the place that they once did? No. Do you, do you think that we're ever going to slide back to 60 or 70 hour work weeks and child labor uh, infraction? Do you really think that that is a danger? Do you know how guilty I am about wearing this pair of blue jeans? If I was really decent, I'd roll them up, walk out in my panties, and ship them back to Gap. But they're the only ones that fit. And I'm guilty about it. Um, I think people are going to wake up. I think the Republican Party is on the way out, just not in the South. Just not in the South. And that's the problem. Um, the only definitive book on the South to this day is J.W. Cash's The Mind of the South. He uses the N-word, every other word, because it was 1938 when he wrote it, 3842. And he says in that book that the religious right will always hold the South back. I'm finding it very true. I mean, I have come home to defend gays. Remember when I left here? Gay? I was like that. Gay? You know, like every other redneck. Now that I've been elsewhere and no longer think of bigotry or hate that kind of hate or that kind of whatever that is, I don't know. It's a, it's a lack of I mean, I don't want to tell people how to think, but you haven't been exposed. You just Never haven't mind. been exposed. Narrow yeah, mind. you're just narrow, yeah. and you're you're banking on some verse in the Bible that you're taking literally, when I could take it a completely different way. After rewrites, I should add. By all these people, right? So I came home, and I realized my whole world had changed. I've been home five years, and I talked to some of these people on Facebook. Here's a good one for you. Marsha Warfield was on Empty Nest the yes. last few years. Yes. And she came, had gotten her a laptop. And she came upstairs, and there was Richard Mulligan, and there was me, and there was Marshall Warfield, and she's just like this. And I said, what? And she said, this girl I'm talking to says she would rather be dead than gay. On Facebook. Say what? When you meet people like this, once you've been away, it's sort of like, is that a joke? They're not joking. They're serious. And it, so I'm a big mouth because they're ruining my environment. They're treating gays inadequately. Has anybody read the Constitution or the preamble or all of that stuff? Anybody understand this? We're all the same. Hello? And then the Supreme Court ro rolls back the voting rights on Section 4, I believe it was. Guys, come on. Well, at least Ginsburg is going to hang on. And I, yeah, I, what they're doing, I don't, I don't know. But nothing changed here much. Nobody uses the N word anymore, at least not in public, like they used to. At least not without. But faggot, you hear a lot. You hear yeah. that, and it's very tiresome to me. It's very tiresome, and I'm, I'm on a high horse about it. Talk to me about what you believe the Koch brothers have done to the face of American politics. <laughs> when you buy the vote, democracy's over. When you buy it, it's over. And we're almost over. The Koch brothers, there's a wonderful documentary. It's set in Anniston, Alabama. And I happen to have worked with the lawyer that handled that case. And the reason they won that case was because the fool Koch brothers were not going to put, let the blacks have their ancient path to walk to church. They wanted the path to. So that, that gored their ox right there. And there, it's a documentary on what they're putting in the water and how sick all the people became. East Tennessee 
cancer rate is one third higher than the rest of the state because the Appalachian will take a job. He doesn't care if it's a dirty job, he just wants to work. And, and we and our children and our grandchildren all the way to Knoxville are going to pay that pipe because we trust government, we trust people, and we shouldn't. Most of my viewers, I think, will know you as Laverne. And uh, I certainly was introduced to you as Laverne. Well, I'm also the whore in many movies. I know. The voice, you see. <laughs> it is. It's the it's voice. voice. It's the voice. Yeah. <laughs> Biloxi Blue. Yeah. 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 This is my first movie. Well, and, and you were in a very important movie, Mississippi Burning. I was in a very important movie, and I got yeah. called out by Rex Reed and Pauline Kale for seven lines. Thank you for noticing. Thank you. You've mentioned Stacy Campfield before. Oh boy. Let me tell you about that. Somehow his friends pop up on my Facebook. And they're, it says they're in their teens. Oh, 19, uh, you know, 20, 21. And they are so mean and vicious. And listen, I've been to New York, I've been to Hollywood, I can hang. But these are kids, I'm not going to go off on these kids, right? So they're so mean, I'm like, y'all, now you got to chill down if you're going to be on Parks Patch, you know. Well, you're, you're a liar and you're a then, you're a then. Then one guy, I said, you'll love it. Listen, go hang back with the ape. He was black. He went off on me that I was a racist. I'm like, dude, it's a famous line from a Tennessee Williams play. And he was black, and he never let it go. I had to block him. He thought, I was just quoting Tennessee, honey. I wasn't throwing off. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So Stacy shows up. If I could just have him alone eight hours in a dark room, I could fix that, boy. <laughs> I had the opportunity last year. To fix him? No. <laughs> <laughs> if I could edit that, I would. I <laughs> but I had the opportunity to talk with him, to sit and actually have a conversation with the man when he was doing his, you know, talk to me, anybody talk to me under a tent outside of a, a you know, public building. Let me guess. Nice. Sure. Pleasant, maybe even a sense of humor. A politician. Absolutely, absolutely. I think he's paid by Alec or the Cokes to try to sway Knoxville. You know, they went into North Carolina, the Cokes did, and tried it to, uh, what's the word, make black kids go to one school and white kids. Did you know that? No. They almost pulled it off. They almost pulled it off, and it was all backed by the Cokes, and I believe it was the Raleigh-Durham area, okay? I think that they, they are paying him, or Alec is really using him as a big tool. Unfortunately, you've got the Tennessee poor, who continue to vote against their own best interest. And he is very strategic at that. I'll give him credit for that. How do you explain log cabin Republicans? I don't, nor do I explain a black Republican, nor do I explain a Cuban Republican, no. No, it's an oxymoron, go back to the dictionary. Get a life, I have no patience for that could have cost us this election, could have cost us. Now look, I've got problems with my president right now. I got big problems with him, but it really, were we gonna have Romney be the president? Please, please. Do I look ridiculous to people? We're gonna have that man? Oh! Koch brothers are dangerous. They're buying your government. Alec is dangerous. They're buying your government. The Republican Party now has just taken 57,000 children out of Head Start. Someone said to me, well, there's proof none of that works. And I said, excuse me, what are you looking at? All the proof I've seen is that it most definitely works. 
and that the children in Head Start eat better, sleep better, and have fewer problems than the children that don't. I guess now the Republicans have come out with some study that shows that that's not true. Common sense tells you it's true. One of the things Stacy and I talked about is how parents have abdicated their responsibility in place of schools taking over the rearing of their children. And in such, or, or, or I for, yeah, for that reason, the schools shouldn't do it. They should then back away. And yet, then who's going to do it? Because now they... The I'm, I'm studying on this because I'm going to tell you, I've got a real problem with charter schools. I've got a real problem. But also, if I was a parent of a young child, I'd have a real problem sending them to public. So, I get it. You can't tell people how to live. Uh, although I'll sit here all day and try. You can't. People are going to have children. And those children need to be a part of, if nothing else, a community, not a charter school, a community. Same ball team, same little outfit, same little, you know, mascot. They need that, in my opinion. Stacy Campfield is more based on a hate thing, particularly against gays. He wants that private money and they're grabbing that child up right away. No. No, that child needs to be a part of community. Now, that's how I feel about it. And I don't, I may be wrong. Maybe down the road, 50 years, the private school was the way to go. I don't think so. I think you've got to have go Green Devils, you know, go Bear Bryant beat Auburn. You've got to have that. But you also have to have those parents as a uh, community coming in and supporting that school. Well, if you don't, now what? Exactly. You can't make a parent be a parent. You can send in child services. <laughs> I don't know what else to... It's a problem because we've lost a generation or two now on drugs. We've yeah. lost them. They're gone. Bye-bye. And we'll never get them back. Their brains are fried. This thing, methamphetamine, like you would do that if you knew what was going to happen to your teeth. Are these people kidding me? What is it, Huff, Drano, what? But it's their business, they can do what, they, it's their life. But if you have children, it, I, I'm not gonna be a moralist. I'm not a mother. I, I have no right to tell anyone what to do with their child. Getting back to politics, you've said that the Democrats really need to speak with one voice. We really do. Is it even possible? Yeah. I like my democracy messy. And that's what Democrats are. They're messy. It's all over the road. It's all over the road. We're just in the wrong place to be Democrats, but that's okay. We can keep on trying. Will we get it together? Yeah. We got rid of Ben Nelson. He's out. Bye-bye, Ben. Go. So now we've got a whole new crop, kind of new, who are uh, at least with us on Head Start on social issues that are very vital to the young and to the development of the personality of the people that are going to inhabit this planet. Will we get there? Yeah. Will we in Tennessee? No. Alabama? No. I, I don't know. We, the South ain't going to cut it. But we're trying. We're trying. And something will happen that one day they'll see it. You know, as soon as that food goes off their table, they're going to start seeing it. I want to thank Park Overall for joining us here on the Lavender Table. It was a thrill to meet her and because we had so much fun and talked for nearly five hours, we ran out of tape. So again, thank you Park. Let's keep the conversation going.